In the alternate universe of Wildstorm, we're gonna pay a visit to the masked vigilante who goes by the name Grifter. He was most popularly part of the superhero group Wildcats. They're set to be a more rigged out version of the Justice League. Grifter, with his guns and quirky conmanship, quickly became one of the more loved members of the Wildcats. When the Wildcats reached their peak popularity, Grifter could be found everywhere, from cartoons and toy lines, and he even went on several solo adventures in his comic series. In this marvelous video, we seek to answer a few questions like why is Grifter so crucial to the Wildcats? Where did he come from? How did he eventually integrate into the DC Universe? And what are the abilities and skills that he possesses? Let's find out. My name's JJ. Welcome back to another marvelous video. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Who is Grifter and why is he so important in Wildcats? Cole Cash, who goes by the alias of Grifter, made his first appearance in the first issue of Wildcats, which was released in August of 1992. Diving into his history as a character, Cole had always taken part in his father's grifts since he was a kid. This meant he witnessed his father swindle people for money and also witnessed his father's murder by the mobster named Sam Del Grassi. Things turned sour when his mother married Del Grassi, but also passed away Away. When he was quite young, Cole's teenage years were full of turmoil since he ran away to escape the abuse he faced at home. After joining multiple groups, he finally decided to set off on his own. This is when he met Zana, and both of them began their relationship. When their relationship came to an end, Cole and Zana decided to join a Daemonite hunting team known as the Wildcats. The Daemonites were an ancient alien race from the planet of Daemon. They are mostly known for waging an eternal war against the alien race of Cherubim from the planet Kera. The team decided to ally with Hightower, a Daemonite warrior himself. Though Hightower is mainly an enemy of the Wildcats, they teamed up with him to prevent two Daemonite overlords from gaining control of a spaceship that could be used to destroy and conquer humankind. Grifter held a personal vendetta against Hightower because he killed his friend Lonely. Grifter refused to work with Hightower but the consequence led up to Marlow threatening to kick Grifter off the Wildcats team. Instead, Cole chose to quit on the spot and took the matter of killing Hightower into his own hands. In the mayhem, the spaceship's self-destruct sequence was activated and the Wildcats were forced to enter and deactivate it. In doing so, the whole team was taken to Kara and Grifter believed the whole team to be dead. Grifter came to to realize that his father faked his own death to avoid dealing with the mob. This information was given to him by his brother. Cole also became the leader of the Wildcats for a brief period, during which several new members joined the team. Cole's brother, Max, joined the Wildcats, but he was sadly killed by an assassin. Cole himself left the team after Zealot's apparent death, and Wildcats were disbanded as a group. Going forward, as we explore a bit of Grifter's storyline in the Wildcats comics that were published by DC Comics and written by Matthew Rosenberg, the comic consisted of 10 issues and followed a winding story about Halo Corporation, Jack Marlowe, Daemonites, and a few more fake deaths. The entire comic story arc begins with Cole describing the ancient alien war that was waged between two races, the Carabim and Daemonites. In the first issue of Wildcats, we are introduced to not only Grifter but also Xana, who is known as Zealot, and Michael Cray or Deathblow. We see the team clearing out a hive laboratory in search of a scientist as ordered by their boss Jack Marlowe. Now Jack Marlowe is the CEO of Halo Corporation, the company that finances the Wildcats. Grifter ends up killing the scientist. The attempt to answer the question of why Marlowe needed the scientist in the first place seems to perpetuate the entire Wildcat storyline. The team is joined by a new character Fairchild. She's an intriguing character as she was also affected by the Gen Factor. She is shown to be a very strong teenager who also burns through her power easily. In the story, we get to see a perfect example of Cole's reckless behavior and self-sabotage while he is attacked, sitting at a bar. The team sets off in search of another scientist by breaking into Althea Labs. Under attack, chaos ensues. Deathblow momentarily dies. Fairchild displays her power and then ran into the most unlikely member of the Justice League, Green Arrow. Falling through the floor of the warehouse proved to be like jumping out of the frying pan, straight into the fire. An injured grifter, worn out Fairchild, and burdened zealot encounter creepy masked cultists, soldiers in power suits, and the Court of Owls. 
The Court of Owls are a secret ancient society and have controlled Gotham City for years now. Their legend is only carried through whispered nursery rhymes. The Court of Owls seem to be the main driving force for most of the conflict throughout the comics. Grifter insists that Halo should launch an investigation on this creepy organization, but Marlowe is preoccupied with other concerns. After an attempted murder of Marlowe, he decides to go public with his agenda as a response to the public outcry against Halo Corporation. During the press conference, he reveals the Seven Soldiers of Victory, another DC team of superheroes. Grifter decides to take matters into his own hands and hunts down Jason Halliday. He turns out to be an associate of Marlowe. Grifter believes that Jason is linked to the Court of Owls in some way. He stands corrected when a masked cult member tries to rescue Jason. In the next issue, the team is transported into a small war-torn country. They are meant to rescue the ambassador's son to prevent further war. We truly get to see the range of his capabilities in this moment. He is truly a man of violence, decked out in guns and the blood of his enemies. He manages to help out his teammates out of a tight spot and lunges onto a chopper, taking over it. Though shortly after, their chopper is shot down. The rest of the team is transported back to the Halo Corporation, but Cole is left behind. Still stuck in the small country ravaged by violence and destruction, Grifter finds no respite. He encounters what seems to be a group of ninjas, led by someone called Angel Breaker. She was a former pupil of Zealot. She is sent solely to ensure that Cole doesn't return home alive. Before anyone from the team can get in touch with him, a worn-out grifter is impaled and killed. Now Michael Cray grows suspicious and continues Grifter's investigation into Jason Halliday. The confrontation goes south when Cray is attacked and eventually put down for attacking Marlowe's associate. One of the Wildcats named Maxine uncovers Cole's grave only to discover that he isn't the Cole of their Earth. The coal of their reality is alive and well, but was made to fake his own death. He is determined to understand why he was set up and framed to be killed. While all these events take place one after the other, the Wildcats begin to question the true nature of Halo Corporation. They begin to doubt Marlowe's intentions and the people he associated himself with. Cole, with the help of Maxine, breaks into the Halo building to revive Kray's operating system, Deathblow. The final entity he decides to meet is Void or Russian cosmonaut named Adriana Tereshkova, is the only one who truly seems to be running things at Halo. Grifter shoots her in the face and is sent into salvation. He seems to be cursed to drift through universes for an eternity, going from Earth to Earth. Cole finds himself in despair and far away from his own home. Each universe gets worse than the last, and while some feel familiar to him, the others are completely alien. Every reality he lands in, someone or something attempts to kill him. He encounters the likes of Lord Hellspont, who is a Daemonite conqueror. He eventually runs into his brother in another reality, which proves to be a sweet interdimensional reunion. His brother's teammates are determined to save Void in their reality. They believe that she is the only one who can save their already ruined world from total annihilation. The enemy of their world is someone known as Lord M. Cole discovers that Xana and him were married in this reality before he was brutally killed and she lost all her hope for the world. Something inside her died along with him. Cole finds himself in between his love for Xana and his brother Max. He's faced with a hard choice. Cole ruthlessly watches his brother be killed by Xana. Realizing that his brother wasn't from his reality and neither was Xana, he kills her as well. As the comic series draws to an end, Grifter faces Void who tells him that to return home, he knows what he must do. This may have involved shooting her in the face again. Cole Cash managed to return home just in the nick of time to help the rest of the Wildcats escape Batman's assault. The Origins of Grifter from the Wildstorm Universe Let's talk about Cole Cash of the Wildstorm Universe. For some context, the Wildstorm Universe is also known as Earth-50, which is one of the 51 realities that were created during the recreation of the DC Multiverse. Initially, Wildstorm remained as a separate reality until DC decided to merge it into their multiverse. Despite turning to a life of crime as a teenager, Cole still maintained a code of honor and prevented one of his accomplices from shooting a cop. He was arrested but offered a choice. He could either go to jail or join up a covert agency to start doing field work. Cole chose the latter, becoming a part of the I.O. I.O. or International Operations was founded as an organization that focused mainly on 
researching superhumans. Cole turned out to be a very talented fighter while working for the IO. His excellent work got him a job in the Black Ops, where he joined a team called Team 7, and he was given the codename Deadeye. The entire team was exposed to an experimental chemical named the Gen Factor, which was originally discovered by IO. This chemical gave them psionic powers, but also adversely affected their mental health and psyche. The effects of this drug resulted in a lot of the test subjects in going insane or even committing suicide. The survivors of this deadly experiment were known as Gen 12, Cole being one of them. Cole grew suspicious of Io and began speculating that Io might be responsible for this drug. Io denied all responsibility and claimed that the drug was some mysterious chemical weapon that was used on the teammates. Cole grew tired of Io's deflection and suspicions and decided to rebel against the leader, John Lynch. Cole united the mental powers of Team 7 against a nuclear weapon that Io aimed at them. After the powers of the members of Team 7 began to diminish, Cole decided to strike off on his own. He met Xana, who's known as Zealot, and she took the effort to teach him the ways of the Coda. Zealot was an ancient Caribbean warrior who founded the clan of warrior women known as the Coda. Knowing the ways of the Coda helped Cole lock away most of his psionic powers and return some of his mental stability. We spoke about Cole's time with the Wildcats. The deaths of his brother and Xana weighed heavily on him. Following these tumultuous events, Grifter fell into a deep depression, using alcohol and one-night stands to cope. Somehow Zealot returned and she spent the night with Cole, but he was too drunk to notice who she actually was. She left before he could recognize her and went on to hunt the rest of the Coda. She did this because the Coda betrayed her, but she decided to spare Cole, given their history together. After this encounter, Cole Cash decided to get his act together and joined Halo Corporation. While he was on a mission for Marlowe, Cole's legs were shattered by a special FBI agent, Agent Orange. This meant he couldn't continue working as a field agent for Halo Corporation. Cole tried to train the accountant, Edwin Dolby, to take up the title of the grifter, but Edwin decided the abundantly violent life of a superhero wasn't for him. Cole then turned to redesigning former teammate Maxine's robotic body for his own purpose. Months later, his legs finally healed due to the Gen Factor chemical still churning away in his system. When Jack Marlowe died, Grifter took up leadership of Halo Corporation and all its assets. How was Grifter integrated into the DC Universe? Grifter was created by Jim Lee and Brendan Choi and published by emerging comic book publisher Image Comics. While the series followed all the wackily violent adventures of the Wildcats, Grifter became one of the most prominent members. Even though Image Comic played the role of the publishers, Jim Lee still owned all the characters. In 1998, Jim Lee decided to sell his image publishing imprint called Wildstorm Productions to DC Comics. When Jim Lee signed on with DC for the Wildstorm imprint, he gave the characters more chances to explore various storylines. The characters are continually used even till now. Grifter proves to be one of the few characters who has switched publishers and still retained his popularity. The Wildstorm universe still existed as a separate reality, apart from the episodic crossovers with DC characters. In the early 2000s, the titles of the Wildstorm universe were widely critically admired. In 2011, Grifter made an appearance in the Flashpoint crossover by DC. Flashpoint occurred when the Flash went back in time to save his mother. Flashpoint is considered to be a restart that ended the continuity of New Earth. As we know in the DC multiverse, New Earth was the mainstream reality of the multiverse that ended with Flashpoint. It launched the beginning of Prime Earth and New 52, both of which merged the DC, Wildstorm, and Vertigo universes. In the alternate reality, Grifter turned out to be the leader of the Resistance, which was based in the UK. It rescued Lois Lane and even fought against Amazons who wished to conquer humankind. His first appearance outside of comic books was in DC's Justice League, The Flashpoint Paradox, which was an animated movie released in 2013. Grifter was said to be killed by Enchantress. After the events of Flashpoint, the timeline was revised. This was done after the Wildstorm universe was merged into DC's new 52 universe. The storyline showed readers how Grifter was still a part of Team 7. The Team 7 of this universe was mostly focused on dealing with superhuman threats. 
Team 7 disbanded, shortly after which Cole was kidnapped by two Daemonite aliens who intentionally triggered his telekinesis and telepathic powers. In the early days of the New 52, Grifter got his own solo series, which was relatively short-lived. He was part of the New 52, Future's End, which recorded a DC timeline that takes place way into the future. It portrayed multiple invasions and cyborg uprisings. In the Pocket Universe, he makes an appearance among other Wildstorm veterans in the Wildstorm, though in this storyline, he doesn't seem to have any powers. What makes the different versions of Grifter so powerful? Apart from his snarky nature and sassy commentary throughout the comic storylines which make him annoyingly endearing, we also can't deny the fact that Cole is a talented fighter. Grifter is highly skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and is a gifted martial artist, to such an extent that he was able to stand his ground against none other than Batman. He also managed to take down the Red Hood in a fist fight once. Though melee fighting isn't his only suit, he's also excellent as a marksman. When we envision Grifter, the image that comes to mind is the masked hero, crisscrossed with gun holsters. He holds great knowledge related to all types of firearms and their functions usually common to assassins, mercenaries, bounty hunters, etc. Also, thanks to his time with the Black Ops, he is fully military trained. The Prime Earth version of Cole is gifted with the powers of telekinesis and telepathy. Telekinesis is known to be the power that is used to move and manipulate physical objects using one's mental strength. Grifter has the ability to control various complex machines, such as being able to fire six guns at once. He was also shown to lift a truck several feet in the air using his telekinetic powers. He uses tactile telekinesis during hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's able to use his telekinesis abilities to enhance his other skills as well. Cole was apparently killed in an attack launched by Mr. Freeze and Cobra Cult, but he was revived by Halo Corporation. They brought him back to life using some sort of biotechnology. This experimental procedure bestowed in him the ability of accelerated healing. This ability can prove to be erratic since he has been able to mend a broken hand in hours but also took months for his shattered legs to heal. Cole also has the powers of telepathy. After they experimented on him, Cole was able to detect daemonites telepathically. This means that he is also able to take control of their weapons, which are controlled telepathically. He also gained the powers of being a mentalist, aka someone who is able to read minds. Staying true to his alias, Grifter is a professional con artist. His ability to chat up and persuade people is impressive. Grifter is the master of deception and that involves the skills of thievery, surveillance and acting. His naturally charming persona also doesn't hurt. Now talking about the abilities of Grifter of the Wildstorm universe, being exposed to the gen factor was both a boon and a curse. He found himself with several supernatural abilities, both physical and mental. These powers, however, constantly shifted in potency throughout his lifetime. This made his psionic powers unreliable, especially in moments when they were needed the most. One adverse side effect of this power was nicknamed the Rush because it was akin to a drug trip. It's described as a telekinetic energy, raw and fierce, twisting through the body, trying to wield all power. If it is left unchecked by any chance, then it can take over the mind and body and drive the wielder to insanity. With the effort that Zella took to train Cole in the ways of the Coda, he was able to repress these powers to a great extent in an attempt to save his sanity. The Coda training also aided him in utilizing his psionic abilities through a conscious effort of controlling his psyche to turn those powers on or off. He can also use the powers without their paralyzing side effects in the presence of another Team 7 member. But in the universe where Cole was brought back to life, he can use those powers without any additional negative effects. Adding on to the long list of his existing abilities, Grifter also possesses the skills of mind control, mental shields, mind scans along with sensory scrying and illusion casting. Sensory scrying refers to the power of perception through someone else's senses. Conclusion. So there we have the detailed and twisted origin story of our very own Grifter. Despite all his superhuman attributes and knack for defying death at every turn, he still faced the most human experience of love, lust, death and grief. 
A part of him surely wishes to seek some peace and quiet, but destiny always seems to have other plans for him. We can end by confidently saying that Grifter is in fact the toughest son of a gun out there who cannot be dragged down. So, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone, see you next time.